Welcome back to the REI hot seat. I have with me again, Jake Campanero. He's our uh, our house resident realtor to give us market insights and crunch numbers on deals with us. So Jake, thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks, Andrew. Ready to get at it. Yeah, getting at it again. So this is our weekly show. Today, we don't have a specific deal to analyze. So we're going to be talking the market. What's happening? Where do we see the market going over the next six months? And uh, what are some of the indicators that are available to us today? First off, Jake, uh, let's just go over the basic reason. Hey, why is it that we have seen some prices coming down on the multi-residential and the commercial side of things in addition to like the residential market? Yeah, sure. So just speaking to the commercial market, Andrew, the you know we're seeing the interest rates increase, right? We're seeing the bond rate increase, so we're seeing it's 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 making it tight on the on the returns, right? Mm -hmm. On your yield, yeah. So as your as your returns get tighter, the debt servicing gets tighter, mm -hmm. right? And it's harder to get financing, yeah. It's harder to get the returns you need out of the product, and yeah. so we're seeing it drive prices down and so that it, rates it's, up. It's like the opposite of lubricating sales; it just makes it a little harder for buyers to buy. So naturally, it's going to yeah. restrict demand. So that's kind of what we see. And then there's this obviously cap rates for those of you who are familiar with that. That's your return on your your real estate before financing. So with these multifamily buildings, back six eight months ago. People were happy with a three and a half sometimes, a four yeah. cap. I mean, it was crazy. Some people were buying it like two caps. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. There was a lot of market, you know, speculation in that. Yeah, right? a lot of speculation. You know, an upward trending market. Right. You know, we'll, we'll be okay at the three cap because we can turn a few units. Yeah, we can turn. Yeah, so people who knew they could burr, that's different. They could yeah. they could turn over their units and, and, and make more money. But now, so when, when you make the interest rate go from, you know, 2%, 3% up to 5%, 6%, now what we're likely to see is cap rates follow. It might not be one for one, but they are likely to come up at least a bit. Yeah. And I, I think we're starting to see that. There are some five and six caps trading now. And, we have, yeah. yeah. the cap, We have seen the caps come up. We're seeing we're seeing a lot more five caps than we have in the past. Yeah, six cap. But the other far thing in that's, between. But yes, we are seeing them as well. But the other thing that's happened is rents are are up about twenty five percent year over year in Canada. Yeah. It's crazy how much rents have come up, and a lot of that is because would be buyers become renters when they don't think the yeah. market makes sense now, or they can't quite qualify. Yeah. They become that, renters. That in combination with, with yeah. lack of housing and combination yeah. of increased uh, immigration. Yeah, right? so we're going to dig into that. Yeah, we're going to dig into that a bit more. But one thing I wanted to show was the ten year bond rate I've got up here. Also, actually, you no, know, let's just, let's look at the uh, the Canada two year bond rate. So I got that right here. So this is basically when people want to put their money somewhere they perceive to be secure. And this is what's advertised to us as being secure, the Canadian government bonds. They're kind of like your benchmark for a safe investment. So what banks do is they'll they'll look at for like a two year mortgage, they'll look at what's the two year bond rate. And if the two year bond rate is 4%, they might say, well, we want to do a six 6% then for a mortgage. So they might do a 200 basis point spread or 250. It kind of looks scary if you look at it over the last you know few months from November to, to now. But if we actually uh, extend this out and look at it over, well, let's see if we can pull it up for uh, all time. What do they have recorded all time? So these are two year bond rates all time. Uh, if you're going way back to like the 19, uh, oh, this doesn't go back out to 1980s. So this goes back to 2007. So we had it up at 4.3 uh, and we've almost actually recovered that rate that we were back in 2008 on those. Let's go back to the uh, the 10 year bond. On the 10 year bond, if you if you look back that all time, you know, 25 plus years back in the 80s, we were at like 12% bond yield. So you can imagine interest rates at that time, like 1985 in March, you know, you're probably getting like 15%, 14% mortgage rates. That's wild. Uh, hard for us to think of that because a lot of us investors, like a lot of people I know, like we've only been investing for like the last 10, 15 years. Yeah. For me, it was like 2011 I started. So I've only really known what, sub three, sub, sub four. four? Yeah, yeah, sub four on the fixed rates even. So, but now like if you, you know, historically we're, we're still low. And that's the thing that I think a lot of people don't quite grasp because they think everything's gone crazy. But I mean, historically, we're still quite low. So anyways, I just wanted to go give some context there. Yeah. Uh, for those people who don't know, you know, that's one arm of it. And then you've got your overnight lending rate, which we're expecting in October, there's going to be another meeting. Yeah. Uh, so we're in October now. So yeah. we're expecting another meeting for the Bank of Canada, and they're going to yeah. probably jack rates again. And yeah, and the, the, the sentiment and the whispers in the street are that, you know, most definitely going up, um, probably going to see about 5%. Or 0.5. 0.5%. 50, yeah, 5%. 5%. 5 woo. Uh, no, that wouldn't 50, be good. 50 basis points. Yeah, 50 basis points. Okay, so um, in another interesting thing I wanted to share is that despite all this, we've had this, this climbing interest rate environment, yet somehow we still have in Hamilton and in Toronto month over month, we have a monthly uh, percentage or sorry, a change. 
So the sales prices, average sales prices have changed 2% 2 up. And this is recorded as of October 4th. But as of the fourth month over month, we were up 2%. In uh, Toronto, month over month, 8.1%. Yeah. Wild. Wild to think, you know, interest rates going up like that. Why do you think that's happening? We're, we're seeing a housing crunch. We're seeing a housing crisis. Mm -hmm. The interest rates increasing has not changed the inventory on the market. No, right? it's artificially it's, suppressed demand. That's correct, what it did. Correct. Yeah. You know, we're seeing, like I said before, right? Builders aren't finishing projects or they're canceling projects. On, on the commercial side, uh, SPA land sales, so site plan approved sales are down. Yeah. Huge, right? Raw land sales are actually up. Yeah. Because people are saying, it, well, the time I horizon is so the four, far. Four or five yeah. years out, right? Yeah. 10 years out, we're okay. But the SPA, the zone, those are down right now and we're just seeing developers not have it. So we're, yeah. we're, 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 we're in a lack of, New construction. Yeah. Okay. We have people who don't want to sell their house at a reduced price hanging on to their homes longer or not being able to yeah. up in, you know, trade up into a bigger house. Yeah. Right. So we're looking at a lack of inventory there. And then we have uh, immigration coming into the country. Yeah. That's the biggest thing, right? It's huge. So the mathematical equation just doesn't quite work when in Canada we could do we could do two hundred thousand new housing starts in a year prior to all this craziness that was like, you know, start of the year that was what we were on track for. But now a lot of developers are just not moving. They're not going to build because yeah. they're not certain about their margins. They're, when when housing prices are coming down, sure if they're already in the project they'll finish it, but they're gonna hang tight until they know where the market's going. That's going to exasperate this this supply problem. So as much as historically we would say yes, prices need to fall because of you know normally when interest rates rise they do. There is a pent up demand that will continue to build, yeah. and that's the part we need to understand is that I don't think they can stay down forever the the prices, but time will tell because no one can predict everything that the people who make these decisions will yeah. do. Well, that's it, Andrew. Like I got my crystal ball, you have yours. Everybody's gonna yeah. have their own predictions. Yeah, and. You know, I, I personally see the market coming back, bouncing back yeah. strong yeah. because of lack of inventory. We're seeing it in the multifamily market still today. We're seeing people do multiple offers on multifam. Yeah, as yeah that's same still as happening. residential. Right? Yeah, and I, I've been following, you know, one of the realtors I follow in Hamilton or sorry, in, in Windsor saying she's getting multiple offers. Yeah. Uh, so, so these things are happening and it's like, it, it is a bit of a head scratcher, yep. but we do know there's more interest rates, uh, hikes coming, but still for context, if you're in immigrating 400,000 people and you can only produce 200,000 new houses or less now, yep. where do those people go? That's it. That's the challenge. And, and I think yeah. that's a big part of driving rental demand as well. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, so predictions, you think markets coming back within about two years? Yeah. So I see, I see. Like maybe a stagnation in the meantime? I or? see things coming down further. Yeah. It has to happen with the interest rates, right? There's there's people that are going to need to sell, right? Yeah. And those are the people that are going to have to reduce their pricing to get this done. Yeah. Um, so I see over the next six months to a year, prices are going to come down continuously. At about a year, year and a half mark, I think things are going to level off. Yeah. And as soon as they level off, uh, I think buyer confidence is going to come back strong, right? Yeah. And that's when we're going to start seeing the market return. Um, I don't think interest rates are going to come back to sub three sub two they may even stay in the fives right? yeah but with a healthy market at the five interest rate that's okay yeah that's okay that's not the end of the world it is historically is, is okay yeah. uh it's just the level of debt both the government and the population have taken on so i mean it'll be a whole new world watching it how will. this unfolds i again i do think just because of the market factor of the lack of supply and needing a place for people to go yeah we i think at the end of all this whenever that is mm -hmm. we see housing prices go to a level that's unattainable for the majority of canadians because of simply the complete lack of supply yeah. so I certainly want to be in the one of the, the yeah. owner class there because there'll be the owner class and the rental class, renter yeah. class. Uh, that's where I see things going. But again, none of this is financial advice because we really just don't know. Obviously, speak with your financial advisor and and, yeah. and talk to your realtor. And, and this, is, this is purely educational. We're just trying to give people an idea of ways to think about things because I look at this and I want to mitigate. Mm -hmm. And I look at what are some of the things I might want to do. I'm going to want to maybe maybe leverage a bit less. Yep. or try and work out a sweet deal because people are doing that now, right? They're working out vendor take back mortgages for discounted yeah, rates. Vendor take backs are, are, are bigger than ever. We're also seeing mortgage assumptions happen a yeah. lot more than we used to, right? Yeah. So anybody who has a CMHC mortgage that's sitting at a at a two, yeah, a three. You're going to make right? that deal work. You're going to find a way. You're, you're actually selling those for premiums right now. Those, right, yeah. Those, those are where you're seeing the 100%. four caps come in. 100%. Yeah. Those buildings, like a huge part of the value is the mortgage that comes with the building, yeah. the cheaper money, right? Yeah. And it's just like people who buy bonds that have a set yield, like they will just pay whatever that money is worth. So you're going to pay an adjusted premium based on the fact that you're getting cheap money. Yep. I think that's my main point right now through all of this. Right? Your due diligence, yeah. right? review, double review, 
yeah. you know, forecast a little bit if you can. Yeah. And and be a, a tad conservative. Right. Well, look right? at look at five years. When's my mortgage renewal up? What will I do? What will run some scenarios? What yep. if? What if this? What if that? How will yep. I handle that? Exactly. And as long as you have those those possibilities ironed out, I think that that you're probably in a pretty solid position. Mm-hmm. But then again, of course, everybody has to make their own investment decision. Sure. So by doing that, Andrew, you're gonna you know I, I I'm still buying personally, mm-hmm. right? I'm still working with clients who are buying. Yeah. Right? And we have these conversations. These are the conversations I have with my yeah. clients, right? It's, we have, it's more how versus whether or not to. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Because you don't also don't want to miss the boat. Yeah. Right. And I, and I know that's kind of a tough, yeah. tough thing for people to think right now, but you yeah. know, at that year and a half, two year mark, we'll see what happens. Yeah. But if you, you know, if you were pens down for the last year and you miss the dip and now all of a sudden that we start coming back up, you know, that's also not a great yeah. position. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's multiple approaches and it's all based on comfort. Like for me, it's not a bad thing to be stacking up some cash right now yeah. in anticipation for deals to come, but also keeping an eye because if we see a couple more months of prices starting to come back up, that's something we want to be aware of. Of course. Yeah, definitely just use this as an opportunity because now you got more houses that sit a little longer. It gives you a chance to review more deals, maybe tie something up conditionally mm-hmm. and actually have a chance to run your numbers. Yeah. So there are some positives to all this. Yeah. For being a yeah. realtor right now, it's actually yeah. quite nice after the past. It takes some of the pressure two, off. Two and a half years, yeah. right? Where it's not multiple yeah. offers on everything. You can actually yeah. run your numbers up front, structure a deal, have the conversation, yeah. you know, chat with the sellers about the VTV, about the mortgage assumption yeah. and, and put up proper deal scenario, yeah. together, which is yeah. nice. Right? Negotiate, yeah. actually negotiate. Yeah, we're back to that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, if you made it this far, thank you so much for tuning in yet again. Uh, make sure that you like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you get notified. Uh, this is our weekly show. We want to make it interactive. We want you guys to list your comments. Let us know what you want to talk about, want to hear from, and we'll respond to those comments the best we can. Right now it's early, so you got you got a chance to get in because we're building this show up from scratch. You know, we're hoping it turns into something huge, but we appreciate you being here with us. Jake, what should people do if they want to find out about deal opportunities that you've got? Yeah, so as always, we're going to have a link below. Uh, click on the link. Put your information in myself or one of my team members will reach out to you and we'll go through a real estate action plan yeah right so we're going to take you from a to z of real estate we're going to look at hey how much capital do you have what is your risk tolerance right we're yeah. going to talk about all the things you and i yeah, help people make that, and, that and decision it is this. It's yeah. this conversation is what i yeah. have with my clients right so yeah. we have a great dialogue and then at the end of that conversation we're going to sit back and go great I think this is the action plan we need to take. Yeah. And that might be a mix of buying real estate, hard hard assets. And then it also might be a mix of of some investment avenues, right? Passive yeah. mortgage investment. You know, yeah. We got a stocks guy if we want to look at yeah. that. Not the best time, but you know, we, we have different avenues. So, so, so in, like in other words, yeah, you'll yeah. listen to people. And if, if there's a different strategy that they should be looking at, you can obviously point them in the right direction. That's right. Yeah, That's cool. All right. Well, appreciate it as always. Looking forward to doing many more of these. And thanks to everyone who's been tuning in. Uh, we'll see you next week. See you next week.